I'll never see a proton decay in my lifetime. Are you sure? I'm positive. <laughs> Hi, radioactive men and women. Trace and Julian here for D News. Atoms decay. It happens. Yeah, one day you've got a bunch of uranium-235, 700 million years later you've got half a bunch of U-235, and the rest is just useless lead that I can barely use to destroy anything. Do you have your enriched uranium? No, not enough anymore. That's because certain elements decay at random, and the amount of time it takes half a given amount of an element to transmute into something else is called its half-life. Half-lives vary depending on the element. Polonium-212's half-life is 299 nanoseconds, while uranium-238 has a half-life of 4.5 billion years. And some half-lives take even longer. Like Half-Life 3, is that what you're talking about? When it is it coming come out, out I've been waiting! Stop toying with us! <sighs> Even some subatomic particles decay, like a neutron can spit out an electron and electron antineutrino, and bam, you got a proton left over. In free space, a neutron has a half-life of 10 minutes. The proton, however, doesn't decay. At least it shouldn't, according to the standard model of physics, aka the explanation of particle physics that every single experiment ever supports. But what if, you know, the standard model is wrong? First, let's talk about the standard model. At a level smaller than protons and neutrons, you've got quarks, which come in flavors like up and down, but they also come in colors. To build a particle, it has to be color neutral. So you either need three quarks that are red, green, and blue, those particles are called baryons, and a proton is one of them, or a meson is made when a quark and antiquark that are opposite colors combine, like red and what's the opposite of red? Anti-red? You are so literal. I love it. And you're also completely correct. Separate from quarks, you have leptons, like electrons and neutrinos. These are very, very light. An electron weighs in at just half an electron volt. So their name actually comes from the Greek word for light. Now, quarks can change into other quarks, and leptons can change into other leptons, but according to the standard model, there is no crossover. And since the proton is the lightest baryon, it should be stable. After all, you can't just create something heavier. But scientists are an inquisitive bunch, maybe you've heard. And in the 1970s, they noticed that these 16 different forms of quarks and leptons with their different colors and up and down spins could fit together. We talked to particle physicist Keith Dines from the National Science Foundation, and he explained that it's sort of like jigsaw pieces. And when you put a jigsaw together, you get a new picture, and the picture spreads across all the pieces. That means that if there is a grand unified theory, then baryons and leptons are connected, and one should be able to become another. That's where proton decay comes in, to bring it all back. If we watch and we wait, and we get really, really lucky, we might witness a proton decaying. And if it does, this means there is something beyond the standard model of physics, aka the explanation of particle physics that every single experiment ever supports. They might have to wait a while though, as the half-life of a proton is estimated at 8.2 times 10 to the 33 years. That's eight million, billion, billion, billion years. So right now, 1,000 meters under a mountain in Japan, there is a tank of 50,000 tons of ultra-pure water. This water tank, known as Super Kamiokande, is watching that H2O, waiting for a sign of proton decay. The current favorite particles physicists think a proton could decay into are a positron, which is a lepton, and a neutral pion, which is a meson. The combined mass of these two particles is far below that of the parent proton, so there should be a burst of energy when the proton unravels. If Super Kamiokande picks up that blip of energy, we've got a revolution in the field of particle physics on our hands. I wouldn't worry about all the protons coming unglued anytime soon, though. The universe will have long fizzled out before then, and probably before Half-Life 3 comes out. Just twist that knife. You know, I, it's a crowbar. Just get actually. it in there. More of a crowbar. Oh, nice. For a recap of some of the lovely ways the universe could end, check out this handsome guy's video. If the universe has enough stuff in it, gravity slows the expansion, and eventually it will collapse into a singularity, and maybe even another Big Bang. This is elegant and beautiful and makes wonderful, satisfying sense. Unfortunately, the universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. If you want to know more, feel free to ask us questions in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on D News. Let's high five again.